It will be a changing of the guard for the Scottsbluff County Commissioners as two longtime board members step down after a combined 32 years of service. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, the Scottsbluff County Commissioners will officially welcome two new members this month as two longtime members leave the panel. One of those veterans is Sherry Blaha, who is retiring after 36 years of service in local government, the most recent of which was eight years as a county commissioner. Blaha says it's been challenging at times and has had to be outspoken every now and then, but overall has enjoyed her eight years serving her third district. All in all, I think I've looked out for the taxpayer, and I know that the new board will continue to do the same thing. Um, I've done my job with due diligence, what that, what that word is, and uh, I've always watched out after the people. The other commissioner stepping down this month is longtime board chair Mark Masterton, who has spent the last 24 years serving Scottsbluff County and has helped them get their 911 system rolled out and the building and expansion of the Garing Jail. So all in all, I feel pretty good about uh, what we got accomplished uh, as a county board during the last 25 years. It's been interesting. Uh, it's been uh, a learning experience and certainly uh, you know, challenging at times. And, uh, and overall, very good experience, and I've enjoyed the heck out of it. Charles Knapper and Mark Harris were elected during the May primary to succeed Masterton and Blaha, and will begin their new duties at the next commissioner's meeting. Well, last week, a Scottsbluff County District judge dismissed a motion filed by a man convicted of a 1988 double murder. Back in May, Jeff Beaupre filed a motion for post-conviction comparison of latent fingerprints regarding the deaths of Sharon Condon and Richard Valdez. Beaupre argues that fingerprint analysis was the precursor to DNA testing, but when the Nebraska legislature set forth the DNA Testing Act, there was no provision that allowed fingerprints to be included in that. District Judge Andrea Miller has denied his motion for latent fingerprint testing, Beaupre's motion to vacate and set aside judgment has been overruled. The state's motion to dismiss this motion was sustained, and all other relief requested by either party has been overruled. Regardless, last month Beaupre and his attorneys filed a new motion for a new trial, and a progression hearing on that matter has been set for February 1st in district court. Well, coming up after the break, Bill Boyer will be in with his first forecast of the year. I'll be back with a check on the weather right after this on KNEB.TV News. At Platte Valley Bank, we understand that you have a busy life, and that means you don't always have time to come to the bank. That's why we offer user-friendly online and mobile banking with features such as iPay, recurring transfers, and mobile deposit. So you can bank how you want, when you want to. Whether you prefer to bank in person, over the phone, or online, Platte Valley Bank makes it easy to take care of your finances. My big secret for designing a quality kitchen on a budget is J&K Cabinetry. They have all the great standard features that my clients love. Solid wood doors and frames, soft closed doors and drawers, dovetail joinery. The quality is amazing. J&K Cabinetry has 17 beautiful locations, sells directly to designers, contractors, and dealers, and provides plenty of options for a semi-custom look. But the most important thing is having a satisfied client and just seeing how much they love their kitchen. J&K Cabinetry, a new kitchen around you. ZM Lumber in Scotts Bluff, your local headquarters for J&K Cabinetry. Pool together all your money with a friend and invest in two Arby's French Dip and Swiss sandwiches for just $6. It's the perfect get rich quick on sandwiches scenario. Arby's, we have the meat. This is KNEB.TV weather from the Arby's Weather Center. Arby's, we have the meat. Well, let's take a look at what we've got going on weather-wise this evening. Clear skies, northwest winds about 5 to 10 miles an hour, so not as windy as it was earlier today, and certainly uh, not as windy as it was yesterday when we had those super cold wind chills, and we're not going to be that cold tonight either. In fact, warmer conditions coming starting tomorrow, 
and they're going to continue for the next five to seven, maybe 10 days before we need to see our next storm system in here mid to late next week. But until then, we're looking at mainly dry, just some breezy periods. That's really all we have to concern ourselves with. 18 and five below your highs and lows yesterday, well short of normal for the first day of 2019. We had one one hundredth of an inch of precip. We're right at normal for the month and the year with that one one hundredth of an inch of precip. Well, speaking of precips, what do we look at when we look at normal precip here across Nebraska? Let's show you. This is a normal annual rainfall totals. Notice we would get anywhere from about 15 and a half to 18 inches, 18 and a half here across the panhandle. Start to go east, it's 20 to 25 inches here as we get to central Nebraska, then 25 to over 30 inches. Now these are normal values for a given year, normal values. Where did we end up in 2018? Well, above normal for most everybody, uh, including uh, 25 to 30 inches, almost 30 inches of precip in Valentine, over 30 inches in Ord and Hastings, and then 35 to 37 inches in Lincoln, and Omaha Epley. So yes, we ended the year well above normal, but notice these huge deficits out here in the panhandle. Sydney almost eight inches shy of normal. Shadron at 4.73 inches short of normal. So while we were five to 10 inches above normal in the eastern part of the state, with the exception of Scotts Bluff, we were well below normal for precip out here in our area. So 1888 in Scotts Bluff, again, over three inches above normal. Alliance, about normal, about a half an inch above normal. But look at some of these deficits. Shadron, 4.7. Sydney, almost 8 inches below normal, just 10.62 inches of rain for the month of, or for the year of 2018. So what are we looking at for the next 90 days? National Weather Service 90-day outlook has a slight chance of above normal precip for us here into our region. And uh, we hope we can get that above normal precip because we're also going to be above normal in temperatures, a slight chance of that as well. I do think the longer we go into the winter here, February, March, we're going to start to see more activity. But until then, the immediate short term is looking fairly dry. Now you're saying, wait a minute, you're talking about dry weather and you're talking about a flood warning. Well, this flood warning is actually for uh, ice jam flooding here along the North Platte River uh, in and around the Llewellyn area. Not anything to do with heavy rain that's falling. Uh, in that area. So don't be concerned uh, that we have that type of flash flooding. It's more flood warning from some ice jam flooding. Now we do have some winds to be concerned about. Let's take a look at those. Uh, here are these high wind warnings out uh, west of Dwyer, just to the west of Wheatland, and then down through the Slater area and into Chugwater, right along Highway or I-25. Winds tomorrow could be over 60 miles an hour at times, and that's going to lead to uh, a blowover risk here again tomorrow across the region. Temps primarily around 30, upper 20s to near 30, all across our area. Colder air confined into portions of Wyoming uh, in central and western Wyoming. We have temps either side of 30 for the most part for us out here uh, across the region. And winds have stayed pretty well in check. Uh, the only difference is in those wind prone areas, which we see stronger winds there every day, it seems like. Westerly winds under 10 miles an hour for most of us. So wind chills not too bad. But it's cold enough out there. We have 19 Shadron and Gordon, 16 in Lusk and Wheatland right now. So it is cold out there in some areas. Future cast tonight shows the winds. Outside of the winds, there's nothing happening here. And those winds are going to stay in the high country overnight tonight. They may start to mix down a little bit into our area tomorrow, but we don't expect uh, winds to get overly strong here in the region. They're going to keep temps up as well. 35 Wheatland and Cheyenne, thanks to those stronger winds. Low to mid 20s for the rest of us here across the region. Either side of 30 in our area, 21 in Alliance looks like it will be the coldest. Then tomorrow, again, Futurecast keeping these winds in the high country. You'll start to see a few of them try to push out onto the plains. We may see some 10 to 20, maybe even 30 mile an hour winds up to the I or Highway 85 corridor. To the east of that and the rest of us, I think we're just going to be dealing with winds in that 10 to 20 mile an hour range. Highs tomorrow going to be about 50 for some of us. 46 Wheatland, 44 in Shadron, right here in the immediate area. We're about 50 degrees or just a couple of degrees shy of it tomorrow as things really look quite nice. Let's take a look at our forecast then. Clear, not as cold, 17 tonight. For tomorrow, again, 10 to 20 mile an hour winds. We're going to be sunny and quite nice. 50 for a high. How about that? That sounds really nice after those super cold temps we had to start off 2019. And we're going to get even warmer than that. Look at Friday, Saturday in the mid-50s. 
Sunday, we're going to see some clouds with a system come through. Clouds, I think, is really all we're going to see from it. Might see some winds on Monday as temps cool back to near 50. Notice I say cool back to near 50. There we go again, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, back into the low to mid 50s here across the region. Really a very nice seven day forecast for the first week of January. You never know when you'll need an extra French dip in Swiss. It could get lost in the car or eaten by a confused stranger. Stuff happens to sandwiches. That's why Arby's made you two French dip and Swiss sandwiches for just six bucks. For only six dollars, you'll always have a spare French dip and Swiss until you eat it. You'll never have to be afraid. Arby's, we have the meat. <laughs> Kerr Heilbrunn, State Farm agent, is here to protect all the moving parts of your life. With auto, home, life, and financial services, Kerr Heilbrunn and her team make it simple to bring together what matters to you. Who is Hydrotex? Hydrotex manufactures and distributes high-performance lubricants and fuel improvers. We've been helping customers improve their operations for over 80 years with products made in the USA. We sell directly to customers and cut out the middleman and offer excellent service and value. Our products last longer and work better so that you spend less time maintaining equipment and more time making money. Whether you're in a factory, farm, fleet, or food processing facility, Hydrotex can help you. Visit HydrotexOil.com or call 308-635-8162. The leaves are turning and the temperatures are cooling, so it's time to come harvest the deals at the Vieira Wireless Fall Savings Sale. Right now, get your family high-speed, truly unlimited mobile data for just 35 bucks per line with four lines. Prices have never been lower for unlimited data. Plus, trade in your current phone and get up to $500 off the latest iPhone and Samsung models. Those are incredible savings on the most popular and advanced smartphones. Don't miss out on our fall savings sale. Hurry into Viero today. Welcome back. A Mitchell man who was arrested during a December drug bust conducted by the Wing Drug Task Force is back behind bars just days after posting bail. 66-year-old David Luce was arrested on December 17th after authorities found a large amount of meth, firearms, and marijuana on his property. Following his arraignment in district court on December 28th, Luce uh, posted 10% of his quarter million dollar bond and was set to appear for a plea in abatement on February 14th. But on Monday, a search warrant was executed on his residence and deputies found Luce sitting at a desk and inside that desk they found a baggie with methamphetamine, a loaded 9mm handgun and a glass pipe with suspected meth residue inside of it. Luce was arrested on charges of possession of methamphetamine, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, and possession of drug paraphernalia. He was scheduled to be arraigned on the new charges today in Scottsbluff County Court. Well, a grand jury that was set for today to investigate the death of Scottsbluff County inmate Corey Green has been pushed back to January 24th. Green died in late November shortly after being arrested on a warrant and he complained about pains and was taken by ambulance to Regional West. He died during that transport, and Nebraska state statute requires a grand jury to convene any time an inmate dies while in custody. And Regional West Health Services has welcomed its first baby of the new year shortly after 5 a.m. yesterday. Charlie Young arrived a couple of days before his due date to become the first baby born in 2019 at Regional West's Birth and Infant Care Center. He's the son of Alex Brannon and Zach Young of Mitchell, and he came in weighing 7 pounds, 4 ounces, measuring 20 and 1 quarter inches. The parents were presented with a variety of baby gifts, which is a regional West tradition for the first baby born each year at the medical center, as well as a onesie commemorating his status as the first baby born during Regional West Medical Center's 95th anniversary year. Well, straight ahead, we'll head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society to meet their featured Pet of the Week. Don't touch that dial. KNEB.TV News will be back right after the break. Exceptional care, right here at home. That's the mission of Morrill County Community Hospital. Morrill County Community Hospital is a 20-bed critical access hospital that owns and operates clinics throughout Bridgeport, including specialty outreach clinics and Morrill County Home Health Clinic. 
as well as Chimney Rock Medical Center, located in Bayard. Our dedicated team is committed to you and our community every time at Morrill County Community Hospital, Bridgeport, Nebraska. When we transform Nebraska corn into ethanol, it doesn't disappear from the food supply. It just takes a little detour. Ethanol is made from the starch. The rest of the corn becomes livestock feed to create meat and dairy products, corn oil, sweetener, and other food ingredients, and maybe a little carbon dioxide to make your soft drinks fizzy. Homegrown ethanol helps satisfy America's hunger for energy and the world's appetite for feed and food. Nebraska's Family Corn Farmers, sustaining innovation. With the new year comes resolutions. Complete your resolution to replace your windows by calling Renewal by Anderson. And right now is your last chance to buy 2019 windows at 2018 prices. Plus, pay nothing until 2020. That's right. You will get 20% off every window and door, plus no money down, no interest, and no payments for 12 months. And free window diagnosis, free in-home estimate, and free removal and disposal of your old windows. Hurry. This offer ends February 15th. Call 472-2199 to take advantage of this offer before the 2018 prices are gone. Welcome back. For today's featured pet of the week, we meet Ajax, an awesome dog who's been at the Panhandle Humane Society for far too long. This is Ajax. He is a boxer, red healer mix. He's a little over a year old. Uh, he loves to play with his toys, loves affection, uh, has lots of energy, uh, easy to train, um, good with other dogs when they go on walks. He's been here a little over six weeks, um, actually almost two months now. Uh, he's our oldest running dog now. A um, couple people have come by and seen him, but no real prospects yet. So his adoption fee is 150. He is neutered, he's microchipped, he is current on all his vaccinations. Um, he comes with a free vet visit, free sample bag of dog food and leash. Um, be a great addition to your family, especially if you have teenagers. This guy really likes to play, likes to rough house. Uh, so come down, meet Ajax, he's a good boy. To meet Ajax or any of the dogs and cats they have available for adoption, you can head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society Monday through Friday during normal business hours. Well, straight ahead, we'll take a peek at what's happening across the region on the community calendar. We'll have that right after this on KNEB.TV News. There's a place where folks still play with fire. The common ground between backyard barbecue heroes and professional chefs. This is where friendships are forged, fire and flavor come together, and new techniques are perfected. Here in Big Green Egg Country, cooking is still treated as an art form. And since the most versatile grill you'll ever own comes with a lifetime warranty, you'll always have the ultimate cooking experience. Visit the experts at Paul Reed Construction, your authorized Big Green Egg dealer. It's a friendly town, that's for sure. Not too big, not too small. Seems like everybody knows your name. We stick together through thick and thin. That's the way it's always been, cause where we live.
well, let's take a peek at what's happening on your midweek community calendar. That's a look at today's community calendar, brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. The kids need to run off some energy after school or too cold to play outside? Bring them to Planet Bounce at the Monument Mall. With many bounce houses, a concession stand, and the largest redemption arcade around, Planet Bounce has hours of fun. Call today to schedule your birthday party, or ask Ron about renting a bounce house for your party, office party, or corporate event. Open Wednesday through Sunday, Planet Bounce Family Fun Center at the Monument Mall. When was the last time you were at Teacher's Corner? We're now TC and more. Come see what you've been missing. Clothing, jewelry, flags, home decor, Toys, American Made. Stop in and see what you've been missing. TC and more, downtown Scotts Bluff. It is never too early to start planning for retirement, and working with an experienced financial advisor can put you on the right path. At Platte Valley Investment Center, our team of financial advisors will work with you every step of the way to maximize your retirement income. Call me, Jody Rosiska, or Rick Morehouse, financial advisors, to set up your free no-obligation consultation. Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC. Life well planned. And finally tonight, Gearing Senator John Stinner says he expects a complicated session when the Nebraska lawmakers reconvene on January 9th. Stinner says with the budget and Medicaid expansion being the major drivers of the session, he would like to see a different method of adding to the state's reserve fund. The Appropriations Committee chairman joined News Director Scott Miller on the KNEB News Extra program today and says he would like to see the fund return to about $500 million, but that's difficult when adding to the fund has only been through forecasting errors over the past several years. You know, we've been lucky so far, but with this economy, for an example, uh, the forecasting board says first year we got 3.3% uh, increase in revenue, second year will be 28 That's what we have to work with. And that at least is, is that increase. realistic, I guess the question is. Yeah, the <laughs> average is 3.1, but the average revenue increases go 45 to 47 So we're still way behind. Mm -hmm. With Medicaid expansion put in there at about a $50 million number is what the fiscal note looks like to me right now. That takes another half a percent out. Stinner says he does not see any room for new spending, with agencies seeking to get back some or all of the spending cuts that have happened over the previous two years. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you here next time. <laughs>